Hello guys, it's Dr. Erica Steele here, uh, naturopathic doctor and functional medicine practitioner, uh, coming on to tonight to talk about does functional medicine work and is functional medicine covered by insurance? Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to kind of talk about is functional medicine work. I think we as a society have been conditioned to uh, give our power away over to a provider. So meaning that um, uh, the reasoning behind me being unwell is a breakdown in my lifestyle. So I'm not drinking enough water, I'm not um, eating enough vegetables, I'm not working out, um, I'm storing toxic emotions, I have an unhealthy mindset, um, I'm exposed to toxicity on an everyday basis, my genetics are not very stable, the list goes on and on and on of causative. And then um, eventually, you know, and I'm running, 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 stressed, doing a billion things, maybe sleeping well, maybe not, etc. Financial stress, all, all kinds of stuff, right? Like a lot of things happening. Relationship stress, you name it. Um, and, and I'm speaking kind of hypothetical to various different cases that I come in, that come into my practice. So a person comes in and they want me to fix it. And they want me to fix it right away. And they want me to fix it cheaply. And they, you know, want me to just give it to them in the pill. Although uh, they've been to all the allopathic doctors and they've been to the specialist and they don't like how the medication feels or they don't, you know, want to take it or they don't believe in it or they're scared of it or whatever the case may be. So then they come in to my practice kind of expecting the same thing. And sometimes they're disappointed when I, I don't provide uh, magic pills, right? And so... To answer the question, does functional medicine work, I think we really have to look at, does the patient work? Uh, is the patient willing to do what it takes uh, to be able to get well? Because, you know, as a medical detective, which is what we are as functional doctors, you know, it's our job to disseminate the data, right? But if the patient doesn't provide the data, it makes it really difficult. And so meaning if a patient doesn't track their food, it makes it difficult for us to advise on nutrition. Uh, if a patient doesn't, uh, isn't open and honest about how, what their thoughts or their feelings are, you know, how can we really help impact, let's say the burden on the adrenal glands and the stress? Um, if the patient doesn't get their blood work, for instance, or do any necessary lab testing, then we're not going to have the data that we need in order to move the person forward. Um, I'm unique in my practice that I don't do everything all up front. So uh, we're trained in uh, functional medicine to kind of run a big assessment, lots of labs, lots of intake forms, et cetera, and we get a full kind of case history at the, at the very beginning. And um, I did that early on in my practice and found it to be very overwhelming for the patient. Um, filling out large packets of health history forms when you're not feeling well um, just wasn't realistic and wasn't practical. Or running thousands of dollars of worth of labs um, that some are covered under insurance and some are not, it was not always economically feasible or taking you know, 25 supplements for various different reasons wasn't always the best for the body and wasn't always uh, meaning like it didn't digest well or the person was so confused with everything that they were doing and also the biochemistry was so confused as a result that the person really wasn't getting well. So over the years I've learned um, to kind of pace myself and do things one step at a time and to teach people one step at a time. And then that way eventually they don't necessarily need me to um, guide them anymore because now they've learned because we've taken this very slow structured approach eventually they've learned what they need to do in order to continue to take care of themselves because you know they're going to be you know with their bodies hopefully for a long time and so um, they're only going to be with me for a short time so we really want to help empower our patients uh, to live a healthy life um, as functional doctors the other question was about insurance. So our insurance-based model um, really doesn't work for functional medicine, and here's why. Um, there's an expectation with insurance companies to see the patient very quickly, to you know, operate under managed care, 
you know, that you don't, you only have 15 minutes with the patient, you've got to take vitals, you've got to assess the patient. Um, it's just not very conducive for uh, coaching of any kind, for health, um, really getting deep into cases. It's like as soon as you're, you're in, you're out, um, you really don't have the time to go over things um, as thoroughly as you would want to in um, a functional case. So I just found years ago that uh, it really didn't make sense for the provider, for me, you know, stressed out because of course, you know, I'm, I'm working on the patients, but then chasing after the insurance billing on the back end was really difficult and stressful. And it really didn't yield a lot of good result. Um, a lot of the functional medicine codes, uh, the insurance companies like to <laughs> ignore. Um, and so they, you know, having to play the HICPA form game and sending a billion HICPA forms and and, you know, it just got to be old and tiring. And this was before healthcare reform. So um, I can't even imagine what it is now. Um, and so it really didn't, it really didn't make sense. So coming out of the insurance model and then, you know, going into private pay, well, you know, a functional doctor, any good functional doctor is going to cost. Um, you know, I'm sure there's some that are starting out that, you know, don't mind doing pro bono work or, or really inexpensive work, but I think any a good provider that really values their time and values, you know, what it takes to be a functional provider. Um, I mean, my, my course, uh, my original naturopathic course had a lot of functional medicine and I chose the school because it had a lot of functional medicine and laboratory and then doing a two year, um, you know, postdoc uh, training in functional medicine as well, and it's super complicated, really hard. Uh, you know, there's a lot of tests involved, a lot of biochemistry involved. So I think any any good functional doc who's got some chops is gonna, um, they're gonna charge for it. I mean, I haven't raised my rates in several years. Um, I've kind of kept my rates at, at a reasonable amount. Um, and so the pay per visit, right, option didn't really work for, it worked for people who needed short-term care. If you only needed, a, you know, a couple appointments or whatever, it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, if I have to come in and help you really overhaul your entire lifestyle, um, that, that becomes challenging. And then too, like, you know, if I give you one or two, you know, or three things to do between now and your next appointment, um, you know, that's really enough. You can't do everything. We can't put your health on a to-do list. It just doesn't work that way, at least not for long term, at least not for really shifting lifestyles and changing. So I thought, okay, well, what if I saw a patient every, every month, right? Every three weeks or once every three months, or if I, you know, for really acute cases, I see them twice a month, right? What if I saw people more often and I broke down these really co complicated things and broke them down and step-by-step step and really walk them through a process and what would that do? What would that look like? And so um, I went back to California and uh, was introduced to a concierge model. Um, it's different from the concierge model that I utilize because we, we, I kind of created the concierge model that we have and learned a lot along the way, I'll tell you. Um, but the reasoning for the concierge model was really to make it more affordable for people. Um, it was a, a means of discounting functional medicine to a place financially that people could afford it. They could plan for it. They could fit it into their lives because I saw that, okay, if you're, if you're, paying for an office visit, plus you have to pay for nutraceuticals, which are, you know, pharmaceutical grade GMP certified supplements. Those are more expensive than let's say, you know, big box retailer supplements, but they're more quality and they're designed to move biochemical markers in different directions. So, you know, one appointment could be, you know, really sizable. So I found if I could break that up over a year period of time um, and make it more affordable for people, more people could um, access functional medicine. Um, so I've gotten a lot of flack for um, having that business model uh, for 
uh, in the beginning, I only had a, uh, like a front and back contract um, that, you know, it was kind of almost like a spit and a handshake. And then I learned, you know, it's amazing. People didn't pay their bills. And if people didn't pay their bills, I couldn't pay my bills. So it was like kind of one of these back and forth situations. And, uh, you know, medical practices do cost a little bit of money to, to run every month. And so I created an agreement so that uh, we knew what was expected of each other. And, you know, it made it more affordable. It was a protection for the practice. It was a protection for the, the patient. They could early terminate and, you know, just pay what the full price would be less the discounts. And, you know, we've, we've managed to make it work, especially providing people a 75% discount um, and upfront billing and make sure that, you know, everything's transparent and we've always worked on trying to optimize our billing process. And um, we're still, we're in another level of optimization right now in our billing process because uh, healthcare billing is very, very um, time consuming. It's very, um, it takes a lot of work. I'll just put it like that. And that's without insurance. So, you know, even with insurance, that, that's a whole nother added benefit. So even though functional medicine typically is not covered under insurance because it just doesn't work, um, there are many providers such as myself all over the country that do attempt to make it really affordable for people. And so um, I always like to say as well, I know this isn't super popular, but, you know, there's no flash sales on cancer. There's no buy one, get one diabetes, you know, you're either going to be subsidizing your illness or you're going to be investing in your health. So this is an investment um, in your health for sure. And it's not for everybody. Everybody doesn't, isn't ready for this level of work. However, I think for the people that do and they understand the value, it really provides a unique offering. And being in family practice, we encourage the whole family to participate. So if uh, people are in the same household, they can add on adults for $50 a month and children for $25 a month, which is amazing because, you know, now you can have your kids start up in this and then they won't even have, they won't even require or need as much care as they grow up. But it's very cool to see kids, you know, understand their nutrition, take ownership of their health really get, you know, what it means to be healthy, what it means to eat healthy, you know, and, and to watch them blossom into that is just such an amazing uh, experience to have. And we do offer that. There's also pay for service and there's DIY plans as well that we provide in our practice. So it's not all long-term care, but for those people that need long-term care, it really provides them quite a discount. Um, I do have some people that just have me come in and evaluate their lab once a year and that's fine. They, they just pay for the appointment and that's it. And some people that, you know, they only see me if they want a physical or they only see me when they get sick or they only see me, you know, um, you know, once or twice a year or once every couple of years, or they just come in for detox. They don't even see me personally. They just come in for, you know, a biomat or a dry sun or a foot detox. So there's a lot of access that we have in the practice. It's not all concierge. Um, but for those people that really need long-term care, we do try to make it affordable um, since typically, um, even if we did bill insurance, uh, you know, you would owe, the insurance company would pay us, you know, peanuts and then we would have to come back and, and bill you. And then sadly, I think the, probably the insurance company would come back and bill you too. So we just found with the lack of integrity um, in all of that, that it didn't really make sense. So hopefully that clarifies some things for you and uh, hopefully we see you at Holistic Family Practice.